We first met back in the first Gulf War when you yourself were in charge of us, the press. No, nobody is ever in charge of the well, press. Well, you were, and there was a pretty decent relationship. Um, Jamal Khashoggi was a member of the press. He was a Saudi patriot. Uh, I want to ask you what you think when you hear the following words. This is from Turkish intelligence and from other intelligence. We also know that the head of the CIA, Gina Haspel, has heard this intelligence and these tapes. So people go into, Saudis go into the consulate. We will take you back, they say to Khashoggi. This is an order from Interpol. Saudi says, Khashoggi says, there isn't a case against me and warns them that people are waiting outside. They then instruct him to write a text message to his son. Then they argue about what to say. And they say to him, cut it short. There's a struggle. What do you think when you hear that? Well, let me first respond to your first question about the uh, holding to account people who committed Abu Ghraib and who committed no, no, Iran. No, first I want to ask you this. Yeah. Sorry, no, that's, no, a, that's a because a red because herring. in our case, in our case, the reason the trials are ongoing and people will be punished. Right. We have I made want that to very ask clear. You what your reaction With regards is to, to this. the reaction to the tape, we know this is a rogue operation that was not authorized. We know that a crime was committed. We have people in jail, and they're on trial as we speak. What do you say to the following? Khashoggi says, there's a towel here, are you going to give me drugs? I, 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 and they I say, we will anesthetize yeah. you. And then there's a struggle, and then a man asks whether Khashoggi's passed out. And then another yes. one, or the same one, says, he raises his head. Another one says, keep pushing, push here, don't remove your hand, push it. It's a, it's a gruesome murder that happened outside authorities and for which the people who committed it will be punished. That's why there's a trial, that's why there's an ongoing investigation. This should never have happened. Then there's a really more gruesome one even. A Saudi official asked whether it would be possible to put the trunk of the body in a bag. Another replied, no, too heavy. It's not a problem. The body is heavy. First time I cut on the ground. If we take plastic bags and cut it into pieces, it will be finished. We will wrap each of them. Terrible. This is terrible. I told you this is a gruesome murder that took place without authorization for which the people who perpetrated are being punished now. We are, they're, being, they're in court, they're on trial, and they will be punished. We have made that very clear. Well, Nick Robertson is following the story from London. You've been following it from the very beginning. Christian, being Christian, pushed pretty hard there, didn't she? What do you make of the response from the Saudis? Um, I met with Adel Al-Jaber as well today uh, and was asking again, you know, was there anything that he found? Um, because he says the problem with the trial that's going on in the country, this trial that he says is happening right now, which it is, which there have been international observers, which a special rapporteur says is, is essentially blemishing the UN's record, uh, that this is, uh, you know, that this trial should be stopped. Um, uh, he says that uh, the Saudis have been short of um, uh, intelligence from from the Turkish side and I asked him you know this information the, this evidence has put forward in the report here is this is this the evidence that you need is this anything new um, look the Saudis have very clearly decided that they're gonna batten down the hatches that they can weather this storm they they question the credibility of the special rapporteur um, they question what she's trying to do by sort of they believe she's trying to take away the jurisdiction of for the trial from Saudi Arabia put it in an international domain um, they believe that she shouldn't be questioning uh, um, the you know the, the crown prince on this issue they've defended him so th they're battening down the hatches and that's what we're listening to right now I asked uh, when are we gonna get uh, when will there be a result to this to this to the ongoing Saudi trial and the answer was very clearly um, we're still waiting for that evidence um, it's it's the transparency here um, that uh, that the international community feels is lacking as well as the validity of the process Okay, so um, all of this is happening, but then let's look at what's happening in D.C. The U.S. Senate has a very key vote coming up in about 15 minutes time now. And the proposal, if it gets enough votes, Nick, would block President Trump's plan to sell $8 billion worth of weapons to Saudi Arabia and the UAE. So we're going to be watching this. So what can we expect from that vote? And how much can we expect rising tensions with Iran and this report on Jamal Khashoggi to sort of factor in to these senators' decisions? Well, if we look at previous votes um, in the Senate to try to block sales of arms to Saudi Arabia, 2016, there was 27 uh, out of the 100 that voted to block. Um, what we've seen in the past couple of years is that number rise. And the expectation today is that, you know, that there will be, um, that, the, that the vote 
will get, the, the weapon sales will get blocked by this vote, and the, and the, the, the same uh, in Congress as well is, is expected. Um, but it's also expected that President Trump will veto this, and then it's expected from that that there won't be the numbers to, to overcome that veto. It's a simple majority to block it today, but it wouldn't, that wouldn't be the case you know, uh, to overcome a presidential veto. The President Trump is trying to use the escalation of the crisis, uh, the situation, the tensions with Iran as a reason to sell the weapons. I asked this of uh, Adel al Jaber today as well. And, and he said very clearly, look, um, we are a, an ally of the United States. We're fighting a common threat with the United States. Um, this is a joint fight. Uh, and anyone who doesn't sell us weapons is essentially um, e enabling those who would call death to America. Here, he means Iran. So Saudi's position on this is, is one that's very clear, that they're, they're fighting as an, they need the weapons to continue the fight and remain a strong ally of the United States against Iran. And that's the position uh, that they're holding. So I think when you look down the road, longer term, um, it does appear at the moment as if those weapon sales would go through. Okay, thanks for that. Nick Robertson, always good to speak to you. Thanks, Nick.